Hello everyone, this is Oshini from Chidda.com. So today I have our computer science department, head of the department, Shornab Jitwomik with me. Shornab Jo is a very enthusiastic computer scientist. He has been working with Indian Statistical Institute with some projects. He has also worked with several multinational corporations on data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning related projects. Uh, I think your uh, main specialization is in computer vision. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. I have been uh, involved in computer vision projects and uh, we have been exploring interesting areas such as uh, event recognition and uh, application of object detection and various problems in that in the research front. Wow, that's fantastic. So uh, you were talking to me about some um, video captioning project. So can you just describe the problem of video captioning to the audience? And before we go further, I should also say that this video is sponsored by the Informatics and Computer Science Olympiad program at Chedda. If you are interested in these computer science programs, check the link in the description for more detail. We have outstanding programs for computer science and it starts from a very early age. You can always join it. Okay? All right. So continuing. Uh, so, what is this video captioning for? Yeah, sure. So, if we if we talk about, uh, I mean, we know in the current day and age, to the extent machine learning and deep learning play a role in solving problems. So, one of these problems that we tackled particularly was uh, video captioning. Uh, it could be termed as a video captioning problem because from an ongoing video of an event, we were trying to identify what exactly is going on in the event using you know, obviously, deep learning and machine learning algorithms. So we were trying to find out, let's say, for example, uh, is it is it a video of a cricket match? Is it a video of a soccer match? Or is it is it a wedding uh, event going on? Or is it a birthday event going on? So you can understand that the challenges are quite replete because, first of all, the classes can be closely linked. Like, for example, uh, if we say uh, a wedding event and a birthday event, both would have a similar ambience unless for a cake. But, but then we know even a wedding uh, it could have a cake. Could have a cake. So, I mean, it is all about how how when you decide on a network, how well you create a model that can differentiate between these finely ingrained classes. Like, uh, I mean, if, if somebody focuses on... So, at the end of the day, we know that in these sort of uh, data science approaches, features play a very important role. Uh -huh. So if we if we talk about spatial features and if if we simply go ahead and down sample any sports video to green grass, then we could be facing problems. Simply because, you know, any cricket video could be of, of the same stadium where which would have green grass and, and a football video would also be having green grass. We would also for a tennis match video ongoing we hear also if it's a Wimbledon match we are likely to find green grass. So, I mean, green grass is not enough just to identify or distinguish uh, finally between cricket and soccer or tennis or from any sport of that matter. Well, Until and unless we bring another angle of feature into the picture. So, maybe multiple features are required and then we can, probably then the algorithm will be able to pinpoint the right sport. Exactly, exactly, sir. That's fantastic because it's all about multiple features in tandem, even in the approach we were exploring. Uh, so, uh, we actually, so the thing that I just told you about, I'm sure some of our audience might also have heard of it. But in this, it's not a spatial features. So, anything that you can get from the image content, like, you know, as I said, green grass corresponding to a stadium or let's say, you know, the ambience or the hall of a wedding, those would boiled out to spatial features right, right. but if we bring temporal features also into the pattern okay i mean uh, also into the picture that means features which can change over time right. for example action uh -huh. and once you bring action we know that a cricket player's stroke is definitely going to be different from a walk on player's movement on the field of course but obviously the way you exploit temporal features and the way you exploit spatial features is going to be different uh -huh. but when you make both of them run the race, obviously you've got better chances of pinpointing well, it, it, what the result was. Well, won't that increase the time complexity of the 
Like the, won't that increase the compute time? In, yeah. In, in general, like if you're trying to. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it would. Uh, I mean, it's. I mean, obviously, since we are uh, uh, incorporating another parallel stream, we call these uh, modes or streams basically. Uh-huh. So currently, uh, for for instance, in our research, we sort of uh, coupled up spatial and temporal features. We dried out temporal features alone as well. But the question that you brought up, sir, that whether uh, it would increase the uh, complexity of it. I mean, it would, but it's not like it's going to cause a huge overhead or something. But I mean, I mean, you have to spend that much if you want to correct, sort of correct, get to better uh, output areas. Yeah. So one of the things that we do in Chitta is high school at college level research projects. Apart from obviously, we have computer science programs, uh, math only bad programs, physics only bad programs, and so on. We are extremely passionate about the research. And Shaulab Jo has led some of their research projects with students from school level as well. And um, it, what do you think that is it possible to for a high school kid or let's say a ninth grade, tenth grade kid to efficiently uh, work on a research project related to these topics? It very much is. It very much is, and we have. Uh, I mean, of course, I've had first-hand experience with some Indian kids working on some of these topics. Right. And uh, what I've seen is that the kind of exposure it gives them. Application is always down the road, but right. the kind of exposure it gives them about these sort of topics, which are so much in vogue and not on a very fairy level. Right. I mean, in the in the very depths of it, uh-huh. and while exploring, you know, sometimes we start off with you know one of these computer vision. Projects. Let's say we are trying to identify. It. I mean, we are trying to do simple uh, image processing stuff, and that is when they learn so much more about OpenCV. You, you know, like the tools that we use to do the uh, everyday things that we do with images. Right. You know, in applications such as image dehazing. Okay. You have an image, uh-huh. and uh, the image has turned out to be very hazy. So uh, you you took a picture. How many? I mean, it happens very often. Right. Took a picture. It turns out to be very hazy. And now we want to, you know, sort of restore the image while keeping, you know, the image content very intact and, you, get, you know, like not by Photoshop techniques, but by computer science and algorithms. Right. Uh, image completion. An image has gotten torn. Some right. Some right. pieces. Yeah. Some pieces missing. Maybe. Yeah. And you have to semantically complete it. Got it. So you know, these are at the end of the day problems in vogue currently in research. Why not? And when we say that a young mind comes and approaches them, the arena of stuff that they get to learn while working on such research work. Right. Well, and the moment we start with these research projects, we make sure that their basics get covered immediately. Yeah. We start off with the basics. It's not like we immediately. Uh, you know, like ask them to go ahead and combat uh, a very, very complicated project. We give them uh, what is supervised learning. We give them what is unsupervised learning. We give them KNN. We give them uh, how to use a CNN. Right. We give them logistic regression. So all these basics. Right. And how? I mean, obviously, I'm not going to go ahead and give them all the uh, rigorous linear algebra. Of course. But I'm going to make it engaging and how they can readily apply and have a have an educated practitioner. Well. Of course, of course. In fact, if you are planning for a research project, uh, maybe Shaulab Chu will offer more research projects in near future at Chintap. Uh, but there are other advisors at Chintap who also continuously offer research projects. Uh, if you are interested in uh, data science or let's say machine learning, or artificial intelligence, children, uh, research projects, you can also start by some reading project. Reading project in the sense. That the basics which you will need anyway for actually going uh, inside the problem and solving it. So it's a, it's a, it, before you go ahead and solve the problem, you need some basics in place. And uh, one of the reading projects on uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence is uh, coming up pretty soon at Chinda. You can check the link in the description for more details on that. Uh, if you are planning to do research projects in future, uh, we would strongly recommend that you register for that. So, Shaulab, it's great talking to you. Uh, I was wondering that maybe we can do these sessions from time to time because many kids are extremely excited about uh, computer science in general, but the 
the newer facets of it like artificial intelligence machine learning blockchain is a big word there but anyway well uh, what i would say that uh, this is my final question to you that how much of mathematical foundation or statistics related foundation do you recommend for the kids who want to go in this direction yeah and you know like um I must say that I have had experience working with some really rigorous students across various competencies. If you might, if you might really think of it that way, but then uh, yeah, I mean, any student who has a love for mathematics, you know, and uh, has exposure to number theory, combinatorics, and you know, the basics of computer science, knows a little bit of programming, has done a little bit of programming. I think is is quite more than ready to explore these domains because we are going to. help them on the way around right and it's not like we are expecting a huge lot yeah. but yeah they should be they should be uh, interested about it like just just to highlight this i just want to add an example we i had a student who's like from the business end of like you know he wants to go ahead and apply this to cost analysis as and the business end of it and originally you know during my interaction with him i i talk about him with the uh, simple projects like uh predicting whether a person would be having diabetes or not i think it's a it's a, it's a very simple project you know there's a publicly available data set we apply a simple binary classifier and the topics and the concepts that he picked up he she was later able to apply currently in his uh, you know mba role where he is identifying and he's actually assisting uh he's trying to study the market using obviously live stock data So these are applications that he then, with growing age, he was able to apply. Obviously, in a matter of two or three years. Fantastic! I mean, uh, that's very encouraging. In fact, that is one of the reasons why I recommend. I mean, whoever the kids who are watching this are very. Uh, I mean, you should start with mathematics, like number theory, combinatorics, uh, geometry, stuff like this. Have a strong grasp on the basic problem-solving skills in the, those things. and once you have a basic set of problem solving skills you can always go ahead and you know uh, dive deep into these sort of projects which are extremely exciting so thank you for uh, coming to this uh, discussion charam jok uh, for today we will stop out here again if you're interested in our computer science programs you can check the link in the description we have beautiful programs on that if you're interested in research projects check that out as well i'll see you in the next video Thank you and take care bye. Thank you bye.